So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. We're down here at the kiln today, and let me show you what we got loaded up. So this right here is about 2,000 board feet of four quarter white oak. I think there's maybe 100 board foot of red oak in here, if I remember right, I'm not sure. Most of this is quarter sawn, and a lot of it was sawed about 18 months ago. The newest boards were probably back in January. This is a Nile L200 Pro kiln with the chamber. You can buy this kiln by itself and build your own chamber, but we got the chamber with it. I built a kiln in the past and you can do it, but it's a lot of work. If I was gonna do it again, I would buy the chamber with the kiln every time. Cause we built this thing in about five days. When I built my kiln back in 2017, I think it was, it took me and my dad about three weeks. And this right here is a lot better of a kiln, a whole lot better. Now this lumber right here, friends, is what I would consider to be air dried, which means it's less than 25% moisture content. How do I know it's 25% or less? With these moisture probes right here, we'll talk about that here in just a second. And because I know when I saw this stuff, and if you got four quarter lumber and you've sawed it more than six months ago, there's a really good chance it's pretty much air dried and it's not gonna get no drier than it is right now. So when you saw up lumber and you air dry it outside, let me kind of explain this. It's only going to get as dry as the EMC of your environment that you got it stacked in. So right now in Tennessee, the EMC outside, the moisture content is about 17% for my state in the summertime. In the wintertime, I think it gets down to about 14%. And what that means is that's as dry as your lumber will get outside in those conditions. So this will never get to single digits that you can use for furniture as long as it's left outside. Now you can take this indoors inside of your house and finish drying it off that way. You can't sterilize it, of course, and you may get this down to about 10%, but it's not gonna get dry enough, in my opinion, for furniture, and here's why. So a lot of people will say the golden rule on drying lumber is one year per inch, and that's really not accurate. So like I was saying, friends, most of this lumber was sawed back in January or even further back. I think some of this stuff I even sawed a year ago. I can't really remember. I'll go back to the videos to reference. But the stuff that was sawed in January is on the very bottom and it's showing 16 and 17% moisture content. And it's only been, what is it, July? It's been six months. And that's as dry as that lumber is ever going to get. If I let this lumber sit out here and air dry for a complete year, it's not going to get any drier than 17%, maybe 15% in winter when it gets really dry, but that's as dry as it's going to get. So letting stuff air dry a year per inch is not really accurate at all. It will air dry until it gets the EMC for the environment and then it pretty much stales out and that's as dry as it's going to get unless you take it inside of a house and finish off drying like we were talking about or you put it into a kiln and properly dry it down to 8% or 6%, whatever you like. So now that we've cleared that up, let me talk about these moisture cables right here. I got four sets of these and these are made by Delmhurst. They go inside the lumber right there. You guys saw me installing those in the last video. I have four sets of them. You can get more sets than that, but I think four is plenty for this size kiln. You have three cables right here going to three different leads. The one in the middle will tell you the moisture content of the shell, which is the outer layer of your lumber. And the two other ones take a moisture reading on the core. So in order to check the moisture content of your lumber inside the kiln without going inside of your kiln, you have this little base out here that the Delmhurst wires will go to. This right here, friends, is what I'm talking about. This is called the Delmhurst Kilmatrol system, and I may be butchering the name, and this is not sponsored by Delmhurst. I bought this about two years ago. It works really good. You take your Delmhurst meter that you hook up to the wire that goes to this system, you set your species, which is on white oak, which is number 32. You set the temperature, which is at 70 right now because that's a universal temperature that you set your moisture meter on unless the kiln's running. Once the kiln starts running and we get up to about 110 degrees, I'll go in here and I will change that to the appropriate temperature inside the kiln. So once you do all that, you go up here on this dial and you pick which lead. So you have number one, which corresponds with the first set of cables. You can check the shell and the core on number one. So let's check that real fast. We'll check the moisture of it here in real time. 16% right there. 
Now we'll go ahead and flip this over to the core and check that. I bet it will be a little bit drier. It usually is on oak. So the core on number one, yes, 15.6. Not a whole lot drier, but a little bit drier than the shell. So that's what you want to see right there, guys. That's as dry as this lumber will ever get outside. And that's why you got to put it into a kiln. So let's talk about something here, friends. If this wood was green, could you put it in the kiln? You could. It will take a lot longer to dry, but you can put oak in the kiln green on a four quarter thickness and dry it. And it will come out just fine if you go by your drying schedule and you pay attention to what's going on in the kiln. Oak, you have to really baby when you dry it in the kiln when it's green, because if you dry it too fast, it will honeycomb on you and case harden and you'll have all kinds of issues with oak and you want to dry it really slow. That's why I like to air dry it first and most of the time saw it in the winter time because if you saw this in the summertime, you can't control the environment outside when it air dries and it could dry too fast. So if you air dry this in the fall and the winter when it's a lot cooler, the temperature's not as harsh on your lumber outside. The sun's not as hot, the wind's not as bad around here and the lumber dries a lot slower which makes the ideal conditions for air drying oak. You don't have to worry about, you don't have to, uh, excuse me, you don't have to worry about case hardening as much when you do it then. But you can saw it in the summer and air dry it. If you are gonna saw uh, oak in the summertime and air dry it before you put it into a kiln, I would put it in an area with limited airflow, completely out of sunlight, and almost create a situation where you don't want the oak to even dry, like you wanna keep it from drying. If you think of it that way, it's gonna dry really slow and it takes away a lot of those errors that can occur with oak, such as the case harden. That's a real problem in oak if you dry it too fast. So if you put this stuff in here green, you can dry it green. It takes about 30 days for four quarter oak. You just have to pay attention to it and know what you're doing. Run the kiln is not just turning the switch on and walking away, guys. There's a lot to kiln drying lumber. And something you do find out when you start running the kiln, you find out how good of a sawyer you are because the wood comes out and it will be a good, uh, a good example of your sawing techniques. Because if you don't saw correctly and you, do have, and you have some poor sawing techniques, the kiln is gonna tell you when the lumber comes out. So, so right there is very important with oak. Dry it slow, if you do it green, know what you're doing and take your time. Now I like to do it air dried because I did most of it in the winter time, therefore that air of having it dry too fast is totally taken away. Then I can put it in here after it's air dried and it's probably gonna take me about 10 to 12 days in this kiln and this oak will be finished. We'll sterilize it at 150 to kill all the buds and you're pretty much done. So that's my best recipe out there for you guys if you're not in a hurry for sawing four quarter oak. Saw it in the fall and the winter if possible air dry it first, then put it in your kiln. And the economics really come into play right there because if I had two loads of this oak, I could do two loads in a month if it was air dried. And if it was green, I could only do one. And you're paying the same amount of power right there. So say it takes $400 to power this kiln for a solid month. You could do instead one load, you could do two loads. So let mother nature help you air dry your stuff if you're not in a big hurry. Just depends on where you're at and what you want to do. A lot of guys out there saw green wood, put it right in the kiln, they have great success with it. There's no problems there. But it's a lot easier if you air dry it first. That's what I've always done here. I think it works out better. And another thing to touch on, when I was talking earlier about taking lumber inside of your house and finishing it off and drying it, you can do that. You can probably get it down to maybe 10 or 8%. It depends on what your climate is inside of your home. But you're not gonna kill the buds or the larva or the insect eggs that are in there. There's all kinds of microorganisms inside of lumber that you can't even see. And nowadays with all these species of trees that are catching diseases that come from overseas and vice versa, you hear all the time about different trees having different diseases and getting worms and the emerald ash borer eating up trees. There's all kinds of buds and trees nowadays. It's probably worse now than it's ever been. So, having said that, I would really, really uh, like to uh, motivate you to sterilize your lumber in a kiln, especially in the world we live in, especially if you're going to sell this stuff. Don't be selling wood that's not been sterilized, guys, because you could sell it to somebody and it's not been sterilized. They'd go build a table from somebody. It goes in their house. Maybe there's termites in that wood. 
they'd come out in that customer's house, they'd get in their walls. Next thing you know, that customer's gonna sue the craftsman who built the table and the manufacturer of the wood. There's a lot of liability there. Don't take any shortcuts. Sterilize your wood in a kiln. 100 years ago, we was all okay. You could air dry it outside. Nobody had heat pumps, so therefore nobody had time to control housing. So you didn't have to worry about stuff like that. And the bud problem wasn't as bad either, I would probably guess. So that right there is a big reason why we do kiln dry our wood nowadays. And uh, I'm not gonna look down or move, but there's a large black snake right here at my foot right now. Hopefully he keeps on moving because I can't stand snakes. There he goes. My goodness, I'll tell you what. I seen him down here yesterday. So anyways, that's my little spiel on kiln drying, friends. If you're not kiln drying your lumber and you're using it for your own needs, that's one thing. If you're selling lumber, gosh, I tell you, I'd be scared to death to sell wood that's not been kiln dried to a woodworker to build stuff for commissioned furniture pieces for uh, customers. I mean, there's a lot of liability there, guys, a lot of liability. So uh, don't let this scare you. Just use this as knowledge to put in your toolbox so you know about it. I know this is a long-winded video. It's not really my style making videos like this where I do a lot of talking about one topic. But I had about three emails the other day. People had problems with their kilns. One guy had a problem with his moisture content. Hopefully this system right here will help him out. And the two other guys didn't know if they should take wood to kilns or maybe sell it air-dried. And that's my advice. Kiln dry it, guys. You'll be better off and it takes the worry out of it. It really does. Get this load baffled up. Get this thing turned on. In one of my past videos, somebody asked me while well, I put this uh, insulation around the boards, and here's why. You got all the hot air coming out of these fans that circulates the air through your lumber. You want that air to go through your lumber and not through these holes right here on the side. So that out there encourages the air to go through the lumber. Go ahead and answer this before you guys asked it down in the comments. This kiln right here, the chamber and the controller, I believe right now it's going for about $39,000 if you bought it from Nile. And I could be off a thousand or two on that. I think it was 38,000 when I got this one. And I'm sure it's gone up a little since then, but probably not a whole lot. So if you think about it, let's say 40,000 when you throw in tats and all that stuff and shipping. So a kiln like this costs $40,000. The concrete is another five grand. You gotta have concrete, you can't put this on wood. I guess you could, but I wouldn't. So this concrete is insulated, it's got a form all the way around and it's got a footer. It's overly built because this is a heavy kiln. Now the kiln's not heavy, the lumber's heavy, of course. And it's also gotta be insulated, so another five grand. Then another probably $1,500 for your electrical. If you could run a, uh, a circuit off of your house or your shop, that's a lot cheaper. I had to run an independent power service to this kiln because we didn't have power down here. And as far as the power service, this kiln runs off 220 volts. I think when the heater is running, compressor and all the fans, it maybe pulls around 45 amps, maybe something like that. And as far as power consumption, this will be different for everybody out there because you don't live where I live, I don't live where you live, and everybody pays different rates for power. If I run this kiln for a full cycle on air-dried wood, which is about 14 days, it costs me about $240 in power. So you gotta factor that in as well. It's not expensive because you are drying a product in here, it's gonna make a lot of money, but you do have to factor that in. So, when you're saving up for your kiln, that would give you some figures to go by. And this right here, uh, Nile does have a kiln smaller than this one, but if you're serious about saw milling, I would get this size right here. It's the perfect size. It will do up to 4,000 board feet. And uh, if you don't want the chamber, I think you can buy just the kiln for about 12,000, but like I was saying earlier, then you have to build your chamber, and that's a big expense right there, plus you have to design it. This one's ready to go. And you can also get this kiln in like a uh, container, like a railroad, uh, not a railroad, my goodness, like a shipping container. I think they sell them already installed like that as well. So uh, that's something else to think about also. So uh, 45 plus the concrete plus the electrical, about 47 grand, you know, if you gotta hire some help, maybe around $50,000, something like that. So uh, 50,000 or less.
Everything's baffled down. I'll go ahead and turn this thing on, let the fans run, just to make sure the baffles don't fall. Because there's a lot of, uh, get out of here, B. My goodness. What was I saying? So there's a lot of air that comes out of these fans. I'm not sure how much CFM per fan, but it's pretty powerful. Those have little bow door motors up there and uh, those are serious motors. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. Make sure we're in good shape and then we'll shut the doors.